a very good morning to my lecturer professor dr siti nora shikin and all my fellow friends my name is ranjini daughter of krishnan metric number 259278 we are from group zymes pratistha will be presenting about peter drucker okay uh, a peter drucker in full is peter ferdinand drucker he known as the father of modern management he was born on 19 november 1909 in vienna austria Uh, Peter Drucker commenced his studies at the University of Hamburg but transferred to the University of Frankfurt where he obtained a doctorate in, in uh, international law in 1931 in Germany. He also became an investment advisor to British industry and correspondent for several British newspapers including the Financial Times then called the Financial News. Uh, in the year 1950 uh, until 1971 was the time of uh, prolific writing teaching and consulting activity with uh, while while he was a professor of management at New York University from 1971 to 2005 he was the Mary Rankin Clark professor of social science and management at the graduate school in Claremont okay, now we move to the history Uh, Peter Drucker later served as uh, as a consultant to a number of corporations, organizations, and governments. Some observers divide Drucker's uh, numerous books and articles into four categories. His early works, such as *The End of Economic Man* and *The New Society*, discuss the nature of industrial society. The second line of books, including *Concept of the Corporation* and *The uh, Practice of Management*, explain the Uh, general ideas about the modern business management next a third body of work including america's next 20 years and technology management and society offers speculations uh, on the future impact of such development as technological change finally there are writings that address questions of uh, practical corporate management Managing in turbulent times and the essay collection, the changing uh, world of the executive. Okay. Uh, next, we continue about the management theory. The Peter Drucker's innovative thinking transformed the management theory into a considerable discipline among sociologists with the practice of business ethics and morals. There are four key theories. Firstly, decentralization. As he saw it, uh, many business leaders would attempt to take on all responsibilities as a display of power or to maintain a level of control, with the suggestion that they were the only ones capable to undertake those responsibilities. In in his book Concept of the Corporation, Drucker stated that uh, decentralization was a good thing as it created smaller teams. Uh, where people would feel that they uh, they could make an important contribution the second theory is management by objective which known as mbo uh, the management by objective is a measurement by which the performance of employees is considered the process involves uh, superiors and their subordinates working together to identify common goals Uh, defining each employee's areas of responsibility and expected results and using this uh, as a plan for a team and to measure its performance okay uh, the third theory by peter drucker is smart method peter drucker suggested that the smart method as means of checking the validity of a plan objective It is used as a criteria to verify that those objectives are specific in their aim, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Next, the last theory is knowledge worker. Drucker suggested that uh, whether business or non-business will be its knowledge worker and their productivity. More, uh, more of a term than a theory. Knowledge worker are workers. whose value is found in their expertise such as uh, architects software engineers lawyers and those who engage in problem solving or creative thinking okay uh, that's all from me 
Now I am pausing the presentation to my friend to my name is Wana Narira Binti Wan Muhammad no? My metric number 263843 So I will continue about the example of company or situation that apply the theory by Peter Drucker The first one is manager by objective, uh, MBO uh, The model is widely used at Intel with a company manager guide providing direction on using the approach Each manager at Intel must begin by choosing a few overriding objectives for a team Establish objective with subordinate that are uh, aligned with a manager overriding objective, provide the subordinate the, the chance to set the process, which help them achieve the goal. Like Hannah Packard, Intel also use a written model to help clarify the specific aim and target. The document make it easier to convey the key message of the MBO model, what the organization is hoping to achieve, what the employee has to do in order to help receiver uh, this objective and what the responsibility of each individual is. According to Andy Grove, who helped establish the model at Intel, the model the model is used at Intel and in other organization as a system which provide a focus for the organization. Okay, the next one is smart method. Smart method specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. Okay, uh, the example is, uh, first, uh, you have to set your goals. Uh, for example, uh, I want to improve my performance. So, what is a specific? Spe the, pe the specific is, I received a low mark on my ability to use PowerPoint at my last performance review. Improving my skill require that I learn how to use PowerPoint efficiently and practice using it by creating various presentations. I like to be more proficient using PowerPoint in time for my next review in six months. Measurable, by the time of my next re review, I should be able to create presentation that incorporate graph, image, and other media in a couple of hours. I should also be able to efficiently use and create template in PowerPoint that my co-worker can also use. For the achievable, improving my PowerPoint skill is, is instrumental in moving forward in my career and receive a better performance review. I can set time aside every week to watch PowerPoint tutorial and even enroll in an online class that can teach me new skills. I can also ask co-workers and my manager for my PowerPoint tips. Okay, for the relevant, uh, working with PowerPoint is currently 25% of my job. As I move up in the company, I will need to spend 50% of my time creating PowerPoint presentation. I enjoy my career and want to continue to grow within the company. And the last one is time bound. Uh, in six months, I should be proficient in PowerPoint, ensuring it only occupy 25% of my work. Note instead of the nearly 40% of the time is occupied now. Okay, next is knowledge workers. A knowledge worker is anyone who works for a living at the task of developing or using a knowledge. Knowledge worker might be someone who works at any of the tasks of planning, acquiring, searching, analyzing, organizing, storing, programming, distributing, marketing or otherwise contributing to the transformation or commerce of information and those who work at using the knowledge so produced. So the example is a uh, software developer, doctor, lawyer, manager, banker, and the person uh, or people who use their intellect to convert their idea into a product, service, or processes. Okay, I will move uh, to the contribution of management theory by Peter Drucker. The first one is management by objective. MBO is an acronym for management by objective and was a first coined by Drucker in his 1954 book, The Practice of Management. Regarded as one of the important contributions of Drucker to the discipline of management, MBO is a measurement by which the performance of employee is considered. MBO include method of planning, setting standard, performance appraisal, and motivation. 
The process involves superior and their subordinate working together to identify common goals, defining each employee area of responsibility and expected result, and using this as a plan for a team to measure its performance. According to Drucker, management by objectives is not only a technique of management, but it is a philosophy of managing. In order to practice the management by objective, the organization must change its path. MBO has become uh, such a popular way in a managing today. Okay, next management function. Management is the organ of institution. He sees management through its tasks. Accordingly, there are three basic functions of manager which uh, he must perform to enable the institution to make its contribution for the specific purpose and mission of the institution, whether for business, hospital, or university, for making a work productive and the workers achieving, and to managing the social impact and social responsibility. All these three functions are performed simultaneously within the same managerial action. A manager has to act as administrator where he has to improve open what already exists and already known. Drucker has attached great importance to the objective setting function and has, and has specified each area where clear objective setting is required. The eight area is market standing, innovation, productivity, physical and financial resources, profitability, managerial performance and development, workers performance and attitude, and the last one is public responsibility. Okay, number three is organizational structure. Drucker has described bureaucratic structure because of its too many dysfunctional effects. Uh, Drucker has emphasized three basic characteristics of an effective organization structure. Uh, these are enterprise should be organized for performance. It should contain the least com the least possible number of managerial level and it must make possible the training or testing of tomorrow top manager. Peter Drucker has identified three basic aspects in organizing activity analysis, decision analysis, and relation analysis. And activity analysis uh, show that work has to be performed, what kind of work should be put together, and what emphasize Emphasis is to be given to each activity in the organization structure. Decision analysis uh, take into account the four aspects of a decision. And the relation analysis uh, help in defining the structure and also to give guidance in manning the structure. Okay, next is the nature of management. Drucker is again bureaucratic management and has emphasized management with creative and innovative characteristic. Uh, the basic objective of management is to read toward innovation. The concept of innovation is quite broad. It may include the development of new idea, combi combining of old and new idea, adaption of idea from other field, or even to act as a catalyst and encourage others to carry out innovation. Peter Drucker treats management as a discipline as well as profession. As a discipline, management has its own tool, skill, technique, and approach. However, management is more a practice rather than a science. Thus, Drucker may be placed in empirical school of management. The basic objective of management is to lead toward innovation. While taking management as a profession, Drucker does not advocate to treat management as a strict profession, but only a labor profession which Place more emphasis that managers should not only have skill or technique but should have right perspective putting the thing into practice. Uh, they should be a good practitioners so that they can understand the social and culture requirement of various organizations and countries. Okay, the next contribution by Peter Drucker is federalism. Uh, Drucker has advocated the concept of federalism. Uh, federalism, also known as a division of power, and it is a concept of centralized control in decentralized structures. 
This centralized structure goes far beyond the dedication of authority. Uh, Peter Rucker has emphasized close link between the decision adopted by the top manager and the aut autonomous unit. Federalism has certain positive value over other methods of organizing, uh, which is uh, it's set to the top management free to, de to devote itself to its proper function. It's defined the function and responsibility of the operating people. Uh, it creates a yardstick to measure their success and effectiveness in operating job. And last, it helps to resolve the problem of continuity through giving the manager of various unit education in top management problem and function while in an operating position. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Janna binti Mahaziri and my metric number is 265685. Okay, I'll be proceed with the criticism and the disadvantages of the Peter Drucker's management theory. Okay, um, what we need to know here is Peter Drucker has stress to the management by objective uh, compared to the decentralization, knowledge workers and etc. Okay, this management by objective theory, on the other hand, doesn't always work as planned as applied to the real work of work. This principle has some flaws. The key flaw in, the in this theory is that it places a greater emphasis on presenting targets on presenting targets than on the work outcomes of the prepared plan. The preparation of an accurate plan will not result in success if measurements about the achievement of specific goals are not used as planned. Okay. Um, the actually the management by objective is a lack of support. For uh, from the top management, okay. This is because okay. This is because the management by objective offers subordinates of level playing field that is displaced uh, by the top management. Without the full help of the board, this program cannot work. Okay. Uh, the situation is subordinates are given an equal opportunity to participate in, in management by objective, which is disliked by the upper management. Then the system will fail unless the, the top management fully support it. Okay, uh, that's one is uh, difficulties in quantifying the goals and objective. Okay, uh, the management by objective will be successful only if the objectives are quantifiable. However, if the areas are difficult to quantify and evaluate, it will be impossible to assess and play performance. Furthermore, there is no subjectivity in performance appraisal in MBO. If only reward productivity without taking into account the employee's creativity. Um, that is, uh, it emphasizes on short-term goals. Management by objective goals are only set for a short period of time, such as six, six months or a year. So this is because, uh, because goals are quantitative uh, in nature, long-term planning is difficult. So because the performance of the subordinate is reviewed by every six months or one year, they tend to focus on their immediate goals without regard for the enterprise long-term goals. This emphasis on short-term goals is counterproductive to organizational efficiency and effectiveness and is not a good sign. Okay, we press, uh, proceed to the next one is uh, inflexibility. Management by objective may cause the organization to become rigid because goals are set um, every six months uh, or one year. The manager may be hesitant to revise them in between, even if the need arises for fear of resistance from subordinates. Managers must learn how to deal with this situation because it is sometimes necessary to revise short-term goals in order to achieve long-term objective. Okay, uh, the next one is lack of follow-up. The superior must contact the subordinate at the proper time under the management by objective scheme. And the subordinate must remind the supervisor precisely what has been achieved and how. If the superior postpone the meeting, it will create um, stumbling blocks in the successful implementation of MBO because the subordinate will also begin to take the program um, casually. Okay. The theory is actually unconcerned with the environment or context in which the goal is established. Uh, such contexts is include um, such context include openness and productivity quality. So the disadvantage of this theory is that it actually doesn't emphasize doesn't emphasize the importance of solving problems and issues encountered in order to achieve goal. 
it doesn't address the issue of a lack of resources for goal preparation and management method. Actually, the story also has a hard time solving the issue of rising management burden on the organizational knowledge challenge. Um, the impact of certain changes in the environment also can completely change the landscape of yesterday as well as action plans that become obsolete um, in the future. Okay, uh, last but not least is uh, actually this theory doesn't address humanitarian concerns where humans only set targets once a year or over a period of time and then they fail to follow the truth. Okay, um, for the conclusion, Peter Drucker uh, has contributed to an ever-expanding and inimitable body of knowledge on management while also enriching equally important fields such as economics, public administration, and public policy. Furthermore, uh, he frequently attempted to integrate theories with management practices through his writing Truck attempted to encourage creativity and entrepreneurship. He offered his consulting services to a wide range of organizations, which provided him with valuable experience in developing a holistic worldview of management, society, the state, and the economy. Okay, that's all from me, and that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.